Hi, welcome back to the channel. Just something a little bit different today. I um, thought we'd go for a ride out to Anson Engine Museum in Boynton, go and look at all the all the old engines and, and see them working. Um, I want to say, I also want to say a big thank you to all the new subscribers. It's great that you've uh, subscribed to the channel and, and all the kind comments as well, encouraging me to do more videos. Um, this is my my youngest, Dougie. He's coming to uh, the museum with me. My eldest and the wife. They've decided to stay at home because I have I have brought them here a few times already and, and they find it a bit boring and I, I do like to absorb as much as I can when I'm there. The engineering that you're going to witness on this video, it, it comes from a time where we were just, you know, we were fantastic top top of the league, you know. And um, it, this this place, Anson Engine Museum, there were so many of these engines produced in the workout, you know, to, to power everything, the Industrial Revolution and everything that went on in the northwest of England and it's all just gone to either scrap or abroad but well, this place has captured as many of the remaining engines and, and put them in one place and they've got a brilliant group of volunteers that have maintained them they've put them on like concrete plinths with fuel cells and etc and they've run them up so when you're there you can actually experience these engines running so you know amazing they've got all sorts of stuff so they've got like Napier Deltic out of the old the, the train the locomotive and they've got um, they've got some Ford Cosworth DFE stuff and all, all whole manner of engines open sleeve valve engines and oil engines and air engines and anyway I won't say anymore we'll get there we'll get some video footage of what I think is the most interesting stuff and I hope you enjoy it and um, yes we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. These, this group were about, just about to go in the boar's head. Oh. They managed to divert the boar's head. Well, they didn't really want to go to the boar's head. Does it normally make that noise? In that one in a minute. Yeah. Right. If I shut it, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We told these old days, they're not in a good place. No, it's alright. It's a good one. <laughs> As you can, this is the exhaust here. Yeah. So when I move this lever, it'll put air onto the engine that'll start it turning over. <clears throat> Won't do it today, but when it's cold, you get a big white genie coming out there. There's a compressed air expands and makes its own little cloud. So once it starts moving, I'll then put it into fuel and the white will change to an environmentally friendly colour. <laughs> You should be up here, this is fun. Carry on. <laughs> right, dirty dirt, dirty dirt, dirty dirt. Wearing gears out, cops closed. No pressure. Go on. I'm built to go. I'm built to go. It is trying to accelerate a six and a half ton flywheel, so.
never seen before. It's some sort of wankle engine made by Rolls Royce, but it's like two ones off of each other. A bit of a description here. Rolls Royce built ever. Wankley's on diesel. Interesting. Very interesting. In this shed here, there's all sorts. He's having a bit of a rest. I've got too much for him. Some sort of generator. Oh look, it's a little Heenan for our diner. With what looks like an MGB engine on it. I think it's MGB or is it A series? No, it's B series, isn't it? Yeah, a little MGB engine. Oh no, an MGA engine. It's a 16 EA. It's an earlier than MG engine, a B engine. Another Heenan Frout Dyno with some sort of engine on it or motor. Maybe it's a. God, I don't even know what it is. Is it a jet engine? Oh my god, there's so much stuff here. What the hell that is? I have no idea. It's driving a dynamo set. No idea what that is. Either a single seat cylinder driving um, something. And then, oh, a gardener. Manchester's finest. And another Heenan Froud. It's not far off my dino, that. Which one is it? Can we see? It's a... No, can't see it. Can't lean over far enough. Fascinating. And then there's this beautiful old thing. Looks like it's having a bit of work, crossly. Wow. Lovely straight eight here from the one from Stockport, Merley's Blackstone. This is a um, diesel engine. 370 horsepower, 600 RPM, that's got some torque, hasn't it? Okay. And then it's got CAV Bosch injector pumps. Amazing, awesome. Maybe we'll see that running a bit. This is a perfect house feature. You could have that in your kitchen, couldn't you? Or in your lounge, just rattling away to itself. Beautiful old thing. Put the governor there where the balls spin out to govern the speed. Centrifugal governor, I think they call it. All right, I get it now. So the belt drives the, um, the shaft up there, which then in turn powers the workshop. We've got the lathe, the radar drill, a saw, all driven by the overhead belts. Guess that's how it was before the electricity. Another lineup of yet yeah, even more single pop working engines. I think that big green cans is cooling system. That's the hot water returning to the top and the cold water feeds in the bottom. Down there, down that green pipe into the cylinder. I think they call that oil bath lubrication. A big oil uh, water cooling tank there. That valve gear there. What you can't get over is how smooth this thing is. Look at them centrifugal governors at the speed. This one's a uh, Ruston Hornsby from Lincoln. Beautiful. This is very interesting. I might be wrong, but I think this is a a supercharged two-stroke diesel. Can't see much information on it. It's obviously got valves overhead for the exhaust side. So it's got an overhead exhaust valve, but it does appear to have a supercharger on this side here, and it seems to be blowing air into a chest in the side of the block. So I wonder if the I don't know how that works. Maybe someone out there can answer the question for me. I suspect it's blowing in and then it's got an overhead exhaust valve. 
I'll ask this man a whole host of uh, engines here. Little single potters, another Rustin, another one there. Beautiful, so smooth and nearly silent that. Just not even got a clunk on it. It's a BNS Bates and Co. Denton. More Mancunian engines. God, how much stuff did we make back in the day? Wow. I think the little guy's just all blown out of it all. Too much for him to absorb. Now this is my personal favourite. This is an AP Adeltic. I'm a locomotive. I can't really explain how it works, but it's got three crankshafts, three sets of opposed pistons, and it's all cut away. Look at the flipping gears on it. That's obviously the supercharger because it, it runs like a, a full scavenging system, not scavenging. It runs like, a, where can we find an example of it here? At bottom dead centre, these ports blow the uh, air in. No, we've got that right. I've got that wrong. Right, we've got ports on each side. Let's see if we can find there. There's the exhaust port, and there's the inlet port. So if that's it, it scavenges across. So it injects, bang. The air goes, fresh air goes in, and chases the exhaust gases out this end. So we always end up with a cylinder full of fresh air. And what also is fascinating is, see this cylinder bore here. See the little holes in it? That is to hold the lubrication. I mean, these things smoked, you know, they weren't particularly friendly. No DPF could have coped with that, that's for sure. But look at that, look at the crankshaft on it. Split, split big engine, and one goes one way, the other goes the other. Absolutely amazing. This, this, this is mega, this. Absolutely mega. What a machine. Who thought of all this? Who drew this up? And it wasn't made on a flipping CNC or a 3D print. Someone chewed this out on a manual miller. Amazing. Just seeing this, which I can give you a better explanation now on uh, how it works. Basically, you've got two cylinders, two pistons that come backwards or forwards on the crankshafts. It injects diesel here, bang, pushes the pistons out. When they get to bottom dead center, the piston comes back, the fresh air from the supercharger pushes in through the inlet board, it's actually got a twist on that to put some swirl into it and then it exhausts on this side, squashes again, injects, bang, because it was a two stroke, fires every cylinder uh, cycle and that there, I recognise that straight away because I've got a Comma TS3 engine and that's a Comma TS3 rocker and um, cylinder liner, same setup again, injects in the middle, exhaust port, inlet port. But on that engine, it uses a rocker system with a crankshaft underneath the engine, but we'll talk about it another time. We've entered, we've entered the modern section. You can see down here we've got that's a W8, I think. That's a W12. So basically, two VR6 engines, you know, the VR engines where the, the top of the piston is wedged because it's a really narrow angle V. So effectively, it's four Vs. And then there's some Bentley engine there, which I have no interest in because. It's got bits of plastic on it, so we'll just we'll just we'll just skip that. And the the real treasure is a look at this. This is a Cosworth Type GB Formula One pressurized forced induction. Look at that. That is absolutely stunning. It's a really wide angle. I don't know what angle that is. It's like 120 degree V or something. 
there'll be a reason for it, be a balance or a secondary balance issue or something. But lovely little bell drives, look at that. Absolutely stunning. This is the sort of thing you want to own. Twin injectors, and what's interesting is they're pointing updraft of the down of the port. I wonder if it's to make them atomize or whatever. Something will go on in this um this plenum here. This is obviously where the, the air gets forced in. There's a couple of turbochargers on the floor there, I assume that's from them. That's absolutely mega. Look at that. Little racing clubs there. <laughs> that's the ECU. <laughs> that's the ECU there. That controls it all. Bet that light being there, all that shaking, all them vibrations and harmonics and whatnot, shaking all the um, bits off the board. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Here's something that's a bit special. This is um, a Sunbeam engine. Oh, it's got a clear um, Perspex cam cover on. And I think what they're trying to show is, this is like the very first Tesmadronic valve systems where it doesn't use a valve spring to shut the valve. The valve is mechanically opened and mechanically shut by two cams. God knows how they kept the clearance on it, but they obviously managed it. And it looks like it runs on this stamp as well. Not today because it's indoors, but yeah, it's got like a push rod system. I don't quite know how that works, but um, amazing, amazing. And over this side we've got, now this is, there's two types of V4. This one is the simple one, so this is the Essex. They do a Taurus as well, which is um, supposed to be a more, oh no, this is a single port one. This is the one out of the Saab. No, it's not, I've got that wrong. It's got a Ford gearbox on it. This must be the Ford one. Yeah, sorry, this is the Ford one. The Saab one has a Siamese exhaust port, so both the exhaust feed into one. That's how you can tell the Saab one. So this one's based on the Essex engine. It's got a bit of a bad rep for um, failing. Little V4, basically two thirds of the, uh, the V6 3 litre Capri engine. But the other engine that they put in the Saab is a much better engine. I think that's based on the Taurus with a chain rather than a fibre wheel. I haven't got a clue what that is. Looks like a big lump of overhead valve, uh, side valve cast. Um, Rover's finest there. Double overhead cam. A mini engine, we'll skip that. Don't know what that is. And this one. I'm not actually sure what that is either, it's a diesel engine of some type. Been cut away for you to see, see how the pump works. Awesome. What's this in here? What's this? What engine is that? No. Is it a Rover engine? No. Rover V8? No. It's a Wiggly Worm. A Wiggly Worm? Yeah. I don't think it's a Wiggly Worm. Yeah. It's not. No. It's, oh, no. Oh, there. Yeah, they're not Wiggly Worms then. It's a Rover engine. Rover V8. And it's a late one because it's got the cross bolt with block. Okay? You get that? You get yeah. that, Doggy? No, I just see it. Wow, it's just, that's a, a saw.
Okay, Dougie, what's happened to this engine here? Um, Can you tell me what's it's happened? Cracked. It's cracked, has it? Yeah. Can you point to the crack on the engine? Stand on here. Come on, you stand on there, mate. Can you point to the crack? Can there. you see it? Um, there. Oh, good spot, Dougs. Good spot. Dirt on the road. Yeah. And it rust over on the fence. And it's there. And we see it already. Yeah. And, and that engine. And there's a rudder one brass in there. Oh, well, I think there's a mouth loose in there, Dougie. No, then it brushed over there. Oh, wow, it's, it's crusted over, yeah. It does. It's and cracked. What's that one, Um, What one? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a drain tap, that, Dougie. Yeah. We'll leave this alone now, Dougs. We'll and, probably get any oil on us. And what's that? A big nut. And what's this? That, that's a little pulley, that. And what's that? Um, another nut. And what's this? I think that's part of, we'll call that like um, a front oil housing, should we say? No, what's that? That looks like, oh, that's where the starting handle goes. No, what's this? Oh, yeah, it just crashed there. It's not crashed, it's where someone's broken it because it's cast, it's just chipped off. No, it just... There's roasting and that piece working on the fence and this one right. and that that's it oh yeah. and that that's You're better it. at this job than me, you and, know. And this what's this is this one just a minute to set out and get some oil in it. Some and, oil in and it. And that so rum 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 rum. And oh. that is that is the rum up there and that motor and Dougie, that, I, I think I over Dougie, and that engine. I think you can take over from my YouTube channel because I think you're better at it than me. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. And, Say bye, Dougie. And, Say yeah. bye. And 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 that sort or sort. What that's the flywheel. Yeah. Is this fun auto auto? Wow, how big is this engine, Dougie? It's it massive, is, isn't it? It is. It's a it Campbell is. gas engine. And um, what's that engine doing? I think that's the camshaft. Do you want to see inside? Yeah. What's inside it's, there? Oh, wow. The big dad. Yeah. Oh, what's that? That's where the big end should go. I think and that, what's that? Someone's took the piston and the rod out of it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and what's that? And what's that in it? Now. Oh, look. Here's the parts for it. So the piston rods are missing. But you see these down here? Yeah. There's the piston and there's the rod. What are they doing? Well, they probably come out for restoration, but someone's abandoned it. Oh, watch yourself. What? Mm, a missing bit done. A missing bit done. Yeah, that, I think they're missing the big end caps, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that one done, and that one done, and that one done. Is it done now? Hmm, I'm not sure, Dougie. Mm -hmm. Oh, and dear. Wonder, what is it, though? Hopefully they put the parts safe. Mm -hmm. I wonder what is it, though. <laughs> I know. It may be fun that way, Dad, the engine. <laughs> That's where the engine goes wow. in the, the dark Right, let's get going now. Come What's on. That one's